Hi, I am Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan. And in this video, we describe the technique of transpupillary removal of silicon oil with a phaco emulsification in eyes that have undergone pars plena vitrectomy with silicon oil injection for a complicated retinal detachment. Now, in this particular case, this was a 45 years old male who was operated for retinal detachment and had undergone a vitrectomy with silicon oil injection about three months ago in the right eye and he then presented with grade 3 cataract the posterior segment was stable the retina was attached and there was no problem in the retina so he was scheduled to undergo a phaco emulsification along with the transpupillary removal of silicon oil through the posterior capsular excess and IOL insertion now this is the posterior subcapsular cataract in a silicon oil filled eye as we all know the posterior subcapsular cataract occurs in a large majority of eyes that have had silicon oil implantation and even after the silicon oil removal the cataract uh, may uh, present and progress rapidly. In these eyes posterior capsular fibrosis occurs and may create uh, problems. Now here we are doing the routine phaco emulsification with a side port incision. Viscoat has been uh, injected into the anterior chamber to coat the corneal endothelium to avoid any corneal endothelial damage especially during the silicon oil removal. An anterior capsular excess is then performed followed by hydrodissection and hydrodelineation. We remove the cataract in a normal fashion performing a horizontal chop and then aspirating the nucleus uh, fragments. Once the cataract has been removed as we can see here there is fibrosis of the posterior capsule which commonly occurs in cases that have had silicon oil. And here we can see the efflux of silicon oil through the zonules. So as we can see, uh, because of the hemodynamic pressure, the silicon oil tries to come out into the anterior chamber. And once we make a posterior capsule uh, opening, it will easily flow out and uh, into the anterior chamber and out of the eye from there. So the posterior capsule is being punctured. Uh, with a 20 uh, shade a capsular excess. It is difficult to perform a posterior capsular excess in a thick fibrotic capsule. However, it can be done with experience. But we must be careful that this posterior capsular excess needs to be a small excess of about 4 mm size so that the IOL that will be implanted into the capsular bag remains stable. As soon as the posterior capsule is opened, we can see the silicone oil coming out and we then put an AC maintainer and the silicone oil is removed by pressing the posterior corneal lip so it just flows out due to the hemodynamic pressures from the posterior segment into the anterior chamber and from there out of the eye as the posterior corneal lip is being depressed. So this is essentially a passive hemodynamic expression of silicone oil through the continuous posterior capsular excess. The AC maintainer helps to uh, maintain the pressure and avoids any rapid hypotony which may be a cause for a choroidal detachment. So with the AC maintainer in place, we continue to depress the posterior corneal lip uh, till the silicone oil has been completely removed. The silicone oil that has been entrapped behind the posterior capsule can also be removed by uh, similarly depressing the uh, in the area where the silicone oil is coming out. Here a three-piece sensor uh, IOL from Abbott Medical Optics is being injected. Uh, this IOL is implanted in the capsular bag. A single-piece IOL may be preferable for some surgeons. However, whatever IOL we use, it should be implanted in a slow, careful manner uh, with slow and controlled unfolding. And of course, needless to say, silicon IOLs are completely avoided and an acrylic IOL is preferable in these cases. The viscoelastic device is then removed from the anterior chamber and the capsular bag and also some small bubbles of silicon oil can be removed by uh, during this irrigation aspiration. The wound is then hydrated, an IOL that is well centered in the capsular bag and the cornea looks clear at this stage. So to summarize, the advantage of hemodynamic expression of silicon oil through a planned posterior capsular excess is that it is quicker, it is a lesser invasive surgery. It obviates the use of creating pars planar infusion line and pars planar incisions and it has been observed that the patients have a faster visual rehabilitation in the post-operative period. So in selected cases where the retina is attached and stable and there is no other retinal complication after a previous vitreoretinal surgery, the silicone oil removal and cataract surgery can be performed in the same sitting 
by using this technique for transpupillary removal of silicon oil. Thank you.